Hello everyone, and welcome to a good old deck profile. Uh, I will be going over my Nightmare Dolls deck. I was requested uh, a good couple months ago, and I apologize for uh, my lack of attention span and actually um, getting the footage all edited. I humbly apologize. That is just my lack of attention span kicking in. But without any further ado, we will do the deck. So let's get started. Of course, we are starting off with our grade zero starter. We are simply running Happiness Collector. Happiness Collector is a standard V starter, which allows you to draw once you ride and gives you a quick shield if you are going second. Quick shield's really useful for just pure discarding and it's uh, very helpful for discarding. Starting off with our grade three lineup, we have Nightmare Doll Carol. She is our main vanguard, and when placed, look at the top five cards of your deck, choose a card from among them, and put it into your soul, and shuffle your deck. If you put a grade three worker word, you may call, the, call it to rear guard. It's very useful for getting Alice and other grade threes onto board, as well as, you know, just getting just pretty good material into soul, especially to call out. Then, then her other on vanguard ability is when this when a grade three is put into your soul, you can counterblast one, discard two, to ride a worker roid from your soul as stand, and it gets drive minus one. Uh, for those who remember, this was the main gimmick of Nightmare Dolls, being able to ride down, you know, very degenerate. Um, but it's also really good for if you want to go into Alice or maybe Chelsea, because I do have Chelsea in this deck. So, those are both very good options. Then, moving on to our second grade 3 of the obvious Alice. Nightmare Doll Alice, while on the Vanguard Circle, when placed, you may call up to one Rookeroid from your soul to the Rearguard, and it gets 5k. It's pretty good. You're not, I honestly never find myself riding into her off of Carol's skill. But it could come up where the 5k is kind of necessary and the extra attack is better but nine times out of ten you're going to use her rear guard effect which is at the end of a battle that this unit attacked counter blast and soul blast one put her into soul to call a non-grade two gone grade three worker roid i apologize from your soul to the rear guard obviously you can use this to call guinea if anyone knows the main loop use it to call guinea guinea then it calls her out for an extra 5k obviously that will come up then we have our one of Chelsea. She's mostly here for matchups where we are where we need to clear cards off our opponent's board. Her Vang, so on the Vanguard skill, at the end of the battle, it she attacks. You can counterblast one, call up to two workeroids from your soul to the rear guard, and if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater, they get 5k. Nine times out of ten, if I ever ride into a grade three, I'm usually calling out Carol, because Carol is just very good, allows you two additional multi-attacks with 10k, which is far superior than one at five, especially on the off chance your opponent does get a trigger. Then her rearguard skill, at the end of the battle she attacked, if you have a vanguard with Workeroid in its, you know, text, you can place her into your soul and choose up to one of your opponent's rearguards, and you may put that card into their soul. It's it's border removal. It is simply that border removal. Yes, your opponent is getting soul, but it, you're getting rid of something you need to get off board. Such as if your opponent leaves Honolulu on board, you can simply call this down or call it out of your soul to get rid of it. Get rid of it and allow you to mul continue your multi attack without having to pay the counter blast. Though we all know Honolulu can just say, I don't care. Continuing our one ofs, we have Mask Magician Hari. On the Vanguard Circle, if you have Generation Break 2, when he attacks a Vanguard, you may choose up the one card from your soul, call it, and until the end of the turn, they both, he and that card, get 3000 power. Then his other effect has Magia Text, which when this, when your G unit strides, during your turn, you may Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast, and Soul Charge in order to call one card from your soul, and it gains a 5k until the end of the turn, and is returned to your soul afterwards. Honestly, we're mostly just running him for the ride skip, especially to get into grade 3, or grade 4. Obviously, we're using him for Clifford, it's basically what I'm meaning. 
apologies for the inability to speak at the moment. And then I'm just going to go right to our last one of, which is the Forbidal Surrogate. Uh, allows you to search your deck for two grade 3s or grade 4 units with different names and either call them if they are grade 3 and add them to hand if they are grade 4. This gets us into Alice and Chelsea if you don't happen to see them. You can also use it to deck thin of extra carols and the Hari from your deck if you really need to. Most of the time you're, we call it Alice and Chelsea off of that skill. And with that, that is our grade 3 lineup, so let's get a move on to grade 2. Going right along to our grade 2 lineup, we are running a 4 play set of Marisa. Marisa, well, when placed from the hand to either the vanguard or the rear guard, you may put a card from your hand in the soul. Look at the top 7 cards of your deck, reveal 2 non-grade 2 workeroid normal units from among them, and add them to hand, then shuffle. Uh, she's obviously one of our best cards. She deck thins two, as well as gets a card into soul, which could be anything from an Alice to a Guinea in order to get the full combo off, as well as, as I said, deck thinning, which for those who don't know the saying, deck thinning is truly, indeed, deck winning. And we are running three copies of Nightmare Doll Guinea. Auto, when this card is placed on the rear guard circle, you may put her back into soul to call up to one card with Nightmare Doll Alice from your soul to the rear guard, and it gains 5k until the end of the turn. I shouldn't, if you've caught on yet, that is our main win con, is simply looping Alice constantly. Call it, using Alice to call out Guinea, Guinea to call out Alice, etc, 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 until our opponent is dead. Uh, obviously, there <laughs> various things could happen, and you could not achieve that, but, well, it's what we do. I'm only running three because it's honestly very searchable, and I just needed deck space. Then, moving on to our final grade two, is two copies of the D format, Silver, Thorn, Marionette, Liliana. I'm going to simply go over her first skill, because her second skill doesn't do anything, since you don't have a Luki or Vanguard. So, when she is rode upon by a unit with Pale Moon, you can Soul Charge, choose a card from your soul, and put it into your hand. This is our optimum ride target, though we're only running two, so chances of seeing her are very unlikely. It's fine if we don't, because we both have Marisa and Guinea, and if we get them, if we could get Guinea as a ride target, that's fine, because it just automatically feeds her to soul, and sets up for the future of the whole Alice loop. As I said, the second effect really doesn't come up, we're really using her as a ride target, and worst case scenario, she is also our optimum ride down target if it really comes up, which <laughs> when I finally managed to beat my buddy's Highlander deck, because it was on an absolute tear, uh, yeah, we rode down. So, this is just our optimum ride target to get cards out of soul once we re-ride to grade 3. And starting us off strong is our optimum ride target, Nightmare Doll Abigail. Abigail, when placed on the Vanguard Circle, Soul Charges you one, which is, it, I, we're playing Pale Moon. Uh, if you don't know the usefulness of a Soul Charge one, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, then her off second skill is Auto on Rear Guard. At the end of the turn, you can retire her, return a Grade 3 Worker Raid from your soul to your hand, and if your vanguard is a worker roid, counter charge one. Uh, once again, I shouldn't really have to give you an idea of how strong this card is, um, especially if you have to ride down to Liliana, you, and you have this in the back row, you can simply retire her to re-add the Chelsea you put into soul, so you immediately have the best ride target, and then you can Liliana afterwards. Very useful. Um, the counter charge also really comes up when you try when you fail to swing for game. Moving right along to our other four of of four masquerade bunnies. Obviously, we're running only one Hari, so if we're going first and we need to find the Hari, we can call down the masquerade bunny, and we're playing a big count of grade threes. So, uh, when she is placed on the rear guard circle, you may reveal a grade 3 from your hand, and if you do, search your deck for up to one grade 3 with Hari and its card name, 
reveal it, put it into your hand, then choose a card from your hand and discard it. Again, this is nice Clifford access to get the double markers that are going to be very important later. Then, continuous skill from your hand when you are paying the cost for stride, she counts as two grades. Uh, it's just more stride fodder. We, this deck actually really appreciates the extra stride father, other than the stride crits and the grade threes. Then, on to our uh, first three of, which is three copies of Nightmare Doll Leslie. I will spoil it in the video I was running for. Um, that is a miscount. Unfortunately, uh, I only realized after I was preparing for uh, the editing that I have one extra Leslie, so apologies for that. Um, anyway, her skill is auto on rear guard when your Nightmare Doll Alice is put into the soul from rear guard. Restand her. It's, it's, it's just good stuff. It's just good stuff. You're able to call her, call Alice back out off of Guinea, which as in return restands Leslie, which means your Alice is swinging for 24 per attack. Assuming your opponent doesn't see a trigger, 24 per attack basically does everything you need it to. We very much appreciate it. It's also our optimum target for triggers because if, if we give the trigger to her, she will constantly restand while the Alice is bouncing in and out of soul. Then moving on to our first first of two one-offs, we are running one copy of Tosca. Nightmare Doll Tosca when placed on the Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. From your hand, you may look at the top five cards of your deck, put one Orcaroid from among them into your soul and shuffle your deck. Again, just it's it's probably our second it's basically our second best ride target, actually, and we just use her to fill soul. That's it. You just fill the soul. <laughs> Very self-explanatory, deck thinning. Our final one of is the Elementary Sanctitude, which is kind of mandatory right now. It is a Sentinel, which counts towards your Sentinel cost. You can only run one in your deck, and if your opponent has Trouble Drive, you pay for free. It's just a PG if you're grade 3 or lower. That's literally it. That is all you need to know. And for everyone who knows how crazy the Elementary Sanctitude is, um, yeah, you know. You know it. If you don't, uh, imagine your opponent attacking with a Grade 3 Vanguard, or your Stride Vanguard, and um, they have to have, an, they happen to have that one attack that you need to block, and, oh look, Elementary Sanctitude PG it for free. Any attack, as long as they're Grade 3. So, that is, oh, if they're grade four, I apologize. Anyway, that is our grade one lineup. Moving right along to our trigger. Starting our trigger lineup, we are running Ovarion. Um, for over triggers, you can do honestly better. Right now, I run Ovarion because you can target two cards on the field and give them 10k or 100 million. Um, this can be very useful for uh, just. You can just give it to Leslie, and now uh, every time Leslie restands, Alice is just a big chonker. And in and, and in honestly funny cases, you could set a Leslie to the uh, to the oh what would it be Excel circle. And uh, oh, I just saw this. Now every time Alice goes into my soul, this is restanding. With, that is restanding with a hundred million. Uh, yeah, it's very funny. Um, it's very unlikely to happen, but it can happen. I would honestly only trigger other OT I'd recommend is the Dark States. You could potentially run Blue OT, and I don't think Red OT is good in this deck only because you're already multi-attacking and throwing cards into soul, so. Moving right along, we have our heal triggers of through four Nightmare Doll Lindy. Lindy, when she is placed on the Guardian Circle from hand, if you do not ride to grade three, you can either give your Vanguard 10k or give your opponent's unit a two, minus 2 crit till the end of that battle. And in worst case scenario, you could call it to the rear guard to ping yourself for a damage. Uh, it should be pretty easy. We need it for we need it to survive into later turns, especially if our opponent is running uh, <laughs> errata strides like we are. Then going on to the rest of our PGs, we're simply running a playset of Hades Hypnotist because we very much want the extra draw. 
It's just I I prefer draw triggers in all on it. Or I prefer draw PGs because they don't argue with our grade one lineup. Then we are running four copies of Exotic Jerker. Really, I should be running Dark Side Bladers since it's an automatic draw when it goes into damage, but I really don't like the fact that the effect is locked behind the Harry name. So I kind of prefer this one just because you can get the extra draw for calling it to board. And that's really the reason I'm running this over Dark Side Blade, Blade Master. Then we have the four stride crits of Covet Bunny. Again, self-explanatory, Covet Bunny is just extra f stride fodder that <laughs> makes us not have to sacrifice a grade three. So yeah, we prefer that. So we have now covered our triggers. We can now go on to the G deck. Starting our G deck lineup is basically the mandatory Harmonix Messiah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately I do run him. Uh, while in the G zone, you flip him after riding into your grade one, going second to get your guardian shield crest or shield or ticket, you know, whatever it is, just the token that everyone hates because you have to buy a $50 card to get. Uh, that's the only reason we use it. You do have plenty of opportunities to potentially use it in other cases, but it, it never comes up. It just literally never comes up. And since his name came up multiple times, we'll move right on to our Miracle of Lunar Square, Clifford. Clifford is the is the Arata stride. So if you have a Hari Vanguard, you could discard up to a total of you know grade three or greater in order to stride him. Then flip the other copy in order to get two imaginary gift excels. Uh, I shouldn't have to tell you how useful uh, draw two is. And then. His other skill, uh, when this unit hits an opponent's vanguard, choose a grade 2 or less card from your soul, call it to the rear guard, and it gains 2k. Then, of course, we have the red text that guarantees that on-hit attack. Very useful. Um, just the draw 2 is very, very nice. And then being able to triple drive on top of that, just to give yourself 5 cards in hand, is very helpful and useful. Especially since we can also call multiple cards out without having to dedicate anything from our hand by him and Hari skill. Moving on to our next G unit, we are running two copies of Fancy Mega Trick Dark Lord Princess. This is probably my favorite, favorite stride because it's very funny. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked, you flip over a card from your G zone. Then you may stride into any unit with attack in the Magia skill from your G zone as a stand then it gets dry minus two and if you strode call this card to the rear guard getting two attackers just for flipping over a g unit is very funny and uh, <laughs> i i just i love doing this gimmick because she pairs very nicely with mid-air mega trick yvette we are only running one copy because once you have it flipped face up you don't need to worry about it so first she has the Magia text and of course attack power because those are the requirements for Dark Lord Princess. When she attacks you may put a card from your hand into her soul, flip another G unit face up and this card and get an imaginary gift excel. Then call a card from your soul to the additional rear guard. It gains 15 until the end of the turn and then put it into the soul as well at the end of the turn. Oh this one is funny. Imagine. Imagine being able to draw uh, another five cards. Uh, I love it. It's a very funny combination. You can also use it to call out another Alice. That Alice becomes very big. And yeah, do do that. And then you get to use Alice's skill anyway. Then we have our other target for Dark Lord Princess in Dragon Masquerade Hari. He has Magia and is a Generation Break 3. When he attacks a Vanguard, do Counterblast, choose one Rear Guard, put it into Soul. You may then call up to three cards from your soul to separate rear guard, and if you have five or more rear guards, your opponent chooses two of his or her rear guard, put them into put them into the soul. Then all cards called by this effect are returned to the soul at the end of the turn. I will apologize for the, the little burp there, <laughs> but he's very useful. Don't go into him often, but if it does come up and you need to clear some cards off your opponent's board, 
that that's the way to do it. Then we are running our main main win con, which is Trenchment Megatrick Leotona. We usually go into her for our second stride. So her skill is when this unit attacks, CB1, discard a card from hand, put all rear guards from your put all rear guards into your soul. And for each card put into your soul, choose up to two units from your soul and call them to the rear guard. If you call four or more different grades until the end of the turn, your opponent has to call two or more cards from their hand. Uh, I'm sure you can imagine why we are running this as our main win con, being able to attack with our entire board, then swing in with her, distribute any triggers we get, and battle during our opponent is basically incredibly powerful and is why she is our main win con and is ten, nine times out of ten what we win off the back of then we are running my one of fun of uh, nightmare doll the abyss beatrix she enables some funny things that aren't very good but are very funny so at the end of the battle that this unit attacked a vanguard if you have a nightmare doll heart card you may pay the cost of putting three rear guards with worker Roy into your soul then you may choose, then you may put her back to the G zone and choose up to two worker roids from your soul and call them to separate rear guards. Essentially, what you do is you call, is you stride her, you do all your attacks, you put, then you attack with her, put those into soul in order to bring back Cha, be able to bring back Carol, sorry, in order to bring back Carol. Then you can call out something like Chelsea or Alice. Then you use their effects to go into soul. Then you trigger uh, Carol's effect in order to enable you to ride into another, which usually you go into Chelsea for the extra 10k on attack declaration. So it's it's such a funny combo that if I ever pull it off, is very entertaining to do, and it's a lot of multi attack. So while it's not very big, it is very funny. Then instead, I'm not running a Zilroth Dragon. Instead, I'm running the Pregenitor Dragon of Gloomy Dark Formin Formido. So all Pregenitor Dragons have the effect of if they are face up in the G zone, you can stride without paying the cost, but you also must stride it by discarding a card with the same name as your Vanguard. So basically, ultimate stride, except without the ultimate stride. Uh, negative at the end of the game, or at the end of the turn. Anyway, when it is placed, you can counter blast one. Your opponent chooses the same number of rear guards as the number of open rear guards and retires them. And if they three or more were retired, you soul charge five and draw a card. This is usually my big I need to clear the board as soon as physically possible card. It doesn't come up often because you need to see the other names of Carol and uh, oft times you don't have it, which tends to stink, but it is a very good card for helping clear out an opponent's board, especially when you call nothing else out. Now moving to our G units, we are running two copies of Jester Demonic Dragon Wandering Dragon. Basically when he's put to the Guardian Circle, you Soul Charge 1, then call a card from your soul to the Guardian Circle. This includes PGs. It doesn't come up often, I usually don't have PGs in my soul, but if it does, it's very funny to call a PG from soul. And it also enables you to see some other targets from your soul. So it does a pretty good job of guarding. I don't go into him too often, only because if you watch the video, I tend to go into this funny boy, since most of the time I need this far more than anything else, of Jester Demonic Beast. Flesh and Chimera. When he is placed on the Guardian Circle, you may put up to one or more cards from your hand into the soul. He gains 10k for each until the end of the battle. Then, if you put two or more cards into your soul, your opponent must choose a card that is rear guard that is standing and put it into their soul. Yeah. Ah, you're going to attack me with more cards. Anyway, uh, send one of your still standing attackers into your soul because you just play them at the proper time and force them to ditch a card into their soul. It does require two, but it's basically a guaranteed guard at that point. Then finally, our last guardian of Cliffheart. Again, this, this one doesn't come up too often, but his skill is when he is placed on the guardian circle and you have generation break one, you may flip another G unit 
and if you have four or more different grades in your soul, he gains an extra 15. So just a 30k body for flipping each unit and being at GV1, as well as having four different grades in the soul. It come it comes up, but I I usually tend to not have the count for it. Pers I usually tend to not have the count for it personally because you're usually using other cards to call. And you're usually tearing apart your soul for stuff like Alice's effect. So he doesn't come up too often, but he's at least a 30k body. And that is the deck. So with that, um, I'm not going to do any combos because, well, this is premium. Premium has hundreds of combos that you can go into, and they are all very, very silly. So I am opting not to go into that. So I hope you all enjoy. Shout out to the individual who requested this. I apologize for my massive, massive delay. Um, Unfortunately, I had big, as I said, attention span problems and had have a lot of backlog of games I am working on. So uh, with that being said, I am Jason and uh, thank you for watching. Oh, yeah. And uh, P.S. Apologies about the quality. Um, I have done my best to try and uh, make things as legible as possible. And um, I cannot guarantee how well this will um, come out. My apartment is not exactly the best for well, showing anything off, especially with the lighting.